What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Armin Enriquez, your subject teacher for probability and statistics. With this video lesson, we're going to discuss the topic which is about identifying regions of areas under the normal curve. Our lesson objectives, at the end of this lesson, you are expected to identify the regions of the areas under the normal curve. Express the areas under the normal curve as probabilities or percentages. And determine the areas under the normal curve given your C values. For the lesson introduction, the area under the curve is 1 or equal to 1. So we can make the correspondence between your area and your probability. That's why dealing with your probability distribution or before we come up with the idea that your table is a probability distribution table, then the total or sum of your probabilities under the table must be equal to 1. So if not equal to 1, then we cannot move forward in using your normal curve to present those probabilities. Because the total or sum of those probabilities under the table or under that probability distribution table is equal to the area or the total area of your normal curve. That's why in every probabilities that we have in your probability dis distribution table, ca we can say that these probabilities are equal to the area or areas under your normal curve. That's why in your table or in your C table, in every C score or C value that we are dealing with, there is a corresponding value of area. Or we can say this area will represent or will be equal to the probabilities under your probability distribution. That's why it is important for us to check and to assess if the total or sum of those probabilities under your table is equal to 1 or not. So if 1, then we can move forward in using your normal curve to present those probabilities. So we can deal with your C table, we can deal with uh, the concept of uh, correspondence no, between your area and your probability. Because in every area that we are dealing with in your normal curve, that will be equal to the probabilities that we are dealing with or the same value that we can get from the probabilities that will be matched in each random variable that we have in your probability distribution table. So for our discussion points, identifying regions under the normal curve. Your C table provides the proportion of the area or probability or percentage between any two specific values under the curve. Regions under the curve can be described in terms of area. So it's another term you know, for your proportion of the area is your probability or percentage. For example, the area of the region between your C, which is equal to 0, and your C, which is equal to 1, is given in the table to be equal to 0 0.3413. Now, for example, so if, you, if your C is equal to 1, then what will be the value of your area based, based on your C table? So if your C is equal to 1, then the given uh, value of your area that will be mapped if your C is equal to 1, then that will be equal to 0 0.3413 using your C table. Now, with this uh, normal curve, as you can see in the figure, no, there are 6 C scores allowed in every normal curve. 
So there are three positive C scores here at the right of your mean, then three negative C scores at the left of your mean. So negative one, negative two, up to negative three. So again, there are, there are only six C scores allowed in every normal curve. So we, we cannot exceed from that number. Now, as you can see here, there's a value being given that will be 0 0.3413 and 0 0.4772. So that will be area that will be mapped to your C, which is equal to 1, and your C, which is equal to 2. Now, using your table, no, if you're asked to find the value of your area between your 0 and your C, which is equal to 2, so based from your table, the area between this 0 and 2 will be equal to 0 0.4772. So again, so if we're asked to find the value of the area no, between your C is equal to 1 and your C which is equal to 2, and you're asked to find the area in between of these two values of your C, then you're going to subtract your area that will be mapped to your C which is equal to 1, to the area that will be mapped to your C, which is equal to 2. And that will be the area between your C, which is equal to 1, and your C, which is equal to 2. As a part of the continuation of our discussion points, to find the area of the region between your C, which is equal to 1, and your C, which is equal to 2, we subtract 0.3413 from your 0.4772. So we're asked to find the area here between your 1, which is equal to C, and your second C, which is equal to 2. Now, if we're asked to find the value of the area from this shaded region, so what will be the process that we can do? So if there is a given value of area that will be mapped to your C, which is equal to 1, and that will be equal to 0 0.3413, then if your C is equal to 2, then the area from your C table, you know, using your C table, your area is 0 0.4772. Again, if your C is equal to 2. Now, we're asked to find the value of your area between your C, which is equal to 1, and 2. So we're looking for the area of this shaded region. So we're going to subtract this value of C from your C, which is equal to 1, to your area from your C, which is equal to 2. So that will be equal to 0 0.4772 minus 0.3413, so that will be equal to 0 0.1359. So that will be the area from your C, which is equal to 1, or to C, which is equal to 2, or the area in between your C, which is equal to 1, and your C, which is equal to 2. As part of the uh, continuation of your discussion points, the regions under the normal curve in terms of percent, the graph of the distribution would look like this. So as you can see in this normal curve, so still there are six C scores, three negative C scores, and three positive C scores. And your mean, median, mo and mode will coincide at the center of your normal curve. Now, there are percentage here. This percentage will be mapped to the areas that will be partnered to each C scores in your normal curve here. Now, if we try to look at your C table, if your C is equal to 1, what will be the area? Your area is equal to 0 0.3413. So we just simply multiply this area to 100. So we multiply this area by 100. And your resulting value will be equal to 34.13%. So we just simply multiply those area that were being reflected no, on your CT ball to become in terms of 
for us to convert this area in terms of percent. So we just simply multiply this 0 0.3413 by 100 to make it 34.13%. So that will be the percent or the area under your normal curve in terms of percent. So we just simply multiplying these areas under your C table by 100 to con for us to convert this uh, decimal to or in terms of percentage. That's why if your C is equal to 1, so the, the region under the normal curve in terms of percent, if this is, uh, if your C is equal to 1, I mean, then the regions that we can map on this one is 34.13% of the total area of that normal curve. So that will be the percentage of that area that we can map if your C is equal to 1. So same scenario, no? if your C is equal to 2. Now, if your C is equal to 2, then your area is 0 0.4772. But now, we're looking with this uh, representation, we're looking for the value of area in between your C values. So now, for this one, 34.13%, that will be the area or percentage, or in terms of percent, no? of area from 0 to 1, then 13.59% is the area or the percentage of area from your 1, which is equal to uh, 1 as your C value, from your 2 as your C value again. And for the next value or the, uh, the percentage of area in between your 2 and 3, so that will be 2.15 percent and right after to the right part of your c which is equal to 3 so that will be 0.413 now if you try to assess this one so that will be a 50 percent of the total area of your normal curve because the total area of this normal curve must be equal to 100 percent so 50% from the negative part or the left part of your normal curve and 50% from the right part from the center going to the rightmost part of your normal curve. So that will be another 50% uh, of your area or, or the total area of your normal curve. That's why if we sum up this 34.13, 13.59, 2.15, 13 and 0.13%, uh, percent, I mean, it should be equal to 50%. So we need to check those values if we get the same value from this one. So same thing with the areas no, under your negative part of your normal curve. It should be equal to 50%. So 50 plus 50, so that will be equal to 100%. Or... If we convert this uh, 100 to, if we divide 100 by 100, so that will be equal to 1. So that 1 will be the total area of your normal curve or the sum or the total of all probabilities under your probability distribution table. So that's why it should be equal to 1 from time to time. Again, as a part of your continuation of our discussion points for this video lesson, so using the C-table in determining areas under the normal curve when C is given. So with our last video lesson, so there is a given value of your population mean, your population standard deviation, your sample mean, and your sample standard deviations. So we're asked to compute for the value of uh, the value of your mean. It depends on what formula we are going to use and that formula or formulas that we are going to use will be dependent on what are the given values if that is from the population or from the sample 
So there are two formulas for that, one for population and one for the sample. Now, with this scenario, so there is a given value of your C here for step number one, and we're asked to find the value of your area. So what will be the area no, using your C table? Using your C table, what will be the value of your area if there is a given value of your C score? Step number one. So, write the given C value into a three-digit form. So, this, uh, sli this slide, no, it's like a review for us because we're done dealing with this uh, type of uh, discussion with your first video lesson, no, with your module 3, part 1. Then, your step number 2, find the first two, digits, uh, two digits in row. So you need to find the two digits in row. Then your step number three, locate the third digits in column. So you're going to look for the point of intersection of these two uh, things, no? From your step number two and your step number three. For your step number four, take the area value at the intersection of row and column. So whatever the value between the intersection of this row and column, so that will be the value of area that we can map to each C scores that are being uh, given in the problem. So that's why we need to follow your step number one, step number two, step number three, and step number four systematically. For example, number one, so find the area correspond to C is equal to Facity 1.96. So there is a given facity C scores, uh, C score here. So if we're going to grab this one, so if this is your normal curve, so if this is your mean, so this will be your facity side and negative side. So your 1.96 will fall somehow here, no? That will be your C, which is equal to facity 1.96. So from zero to your C, so this will be the area. So we're asked to find the area of this shaded region between your zero and your facity 1.96. Sir, is it the same area if we're asked to find the value of your uh, area between your zero and negative 1.96? Definitely yes, because your normal curve is symmetrically. Uh, Meaning to say, so whatever your area uh, between your zero and positive 1.96 is the same area from your zero to negative 1.96. That's why if you use your CT ball, no, I hope there is no irregularities the way we see our areas in your CT ball. Because again, whatever your area from your zero to what value or positive value C scores in your right side is the same value from 0 to the same value of your C scores there. So it's the negative sign lang po. So meaning to say negative at the, at the left of your normal curve and positive for the right of your normal curve. But the area is still the same because your normal curve is symmetrical. Then your step number, there are four steps that we need to follow. First, if there is a given C scores, which is your positive 1.96 in your graph, and we're asked to find the value of the area from your 0 to positive 1.96, your first step is that write the given value, given C value into a three-digit form. So that will be 1.96. So we're lucky that the given value of your C is in a three-digit form. That will be 1.96. Then... For step number two, find the first two digits in row, which is 1.9. So here is your 1.9. Now, for step number three, locate the third digit in column 0 0.06. So that will be 0 0.6 here. So as you can see in the table, this will be your 0 0.06. And this will be your 1.9. Now, whatever the value bit, uh, that will fall no, 
in the point of intersection of this 1.9 and 0 0.06. So that will be the area that will be mapped to your C, which is equal to 1.96. Or we can say that 0 0.4750, since 0 0.4750 is the point of intersection or the area of intersection between your 1.9 and 0 0.06, then the area between your 0 and positive 1.96 is equal also with your 0 0.4750. So this 0.4750 will be equal to your area from your 0 n, or should I say 0 to positive 1.96. That's why in your step number 4, this area is equal to 0 0.4750. So again, whatever the, the value that we can get from the intersection between your row and column, so that will be the value that we can map from that C score or the value from 0 to the given C score from your normal curve. So for example number 2, so there is a given value of C here which is equal to negative 1.15. So if this is your normal curve, so if this is your mean, then your given value of your C is a negative value, meaning to say your negative 1.15 will fall at the left side of your mean. So somehow your negative 1.15 will fall here. So if this is your 0 and this is your negative 1.15, now we're asked to find the value of your area between your 0 and your negative 1.15 as a value of your C. Now, looking at your table, no? so whatever the value that we can get from 1, positive 1.15, I mean, from 0 to 1.15 or positive 1.15 is the same value that we can get from your 0 to negative 1.15. So your first step, so we need to follow your four steps. So your step number one, so write the given C value into three-digit form. So we're lucky that your, the given value for your C is in three-digit form. That is negative 1.15. So using your C table, same thing with your positive 1.15. So we neglect the sign because your sign represents what side of normal curve this C value or C score will fall. If that is a negative value, then it will fall on the left side of your normal curve. If that is a positive value, it will fall on the right side of your normal curve. Now, with this given value, if this is a negative value, then your C score or your C value will fall at the left of your normal curve. For step number two, so find the first two digits in a row 1.1. So this will be your 1.1 in your first column. So if you're going to put here as a value, that will be your 1.1 in your table. In your step number three, locate the third digit in column 0. Point, uh, or I mean 0. 0.05. So this will be your 0. 0.05 here. So we put an arrow for us to visualize more. For number four, we need to look for the area of intersection between this row and your column. So that will be equal to 0. 0.3749. So the area between your 0 and negative 1.15 will be equal to 0.3749. Sir, is it the same area from 0 to positive 1.15? Yes, it is. No. So whatever your area between your 0 and negative 1.15 is the same area from your 0 to positive 1.15. So I hope it was clear enough. No? And Please do practice no? if there's a given value of your C, if there's a given population mean in your sample mean, and you're asked to compute for the value of your C, and look for the value of your area using your C table. So please do practice and practice and practice until such time that you're not aware, but we mastered everything from our C table. So for your activity one, so use your CT wall. Again, we're going to use your CT wall for us to find the area that corresponds to each of the following 
see values. Here, there's a given positive 0 0.56, positive 1.32, and three negative values of C. So, these two values of C will fall at the right side of your normal curve, and these three negative values of C will fall at the left of your normal curve. Do the indicated task. So, explain why the proportion of the area to the left. So, you need to take note of this. To the left of C is equal to negative 2.56. So, we're not looking for the value of your area from 0 to negative 2.56. We, we just need to explain why the proportion of the area to the left of C is equal to negative 2.58 is equal to 0.49%. Why is that? We say that 0.49% is the area no? or the proportion of the area that we can map at the left or to the left of your negative 2.58. So what is the reason? So you need to explain that. For number two, explain why the total area of the region between C and negative 3 and positive 3 is 0.9974 or 99.74 percent so i hope this will be a clear value your 0.9974 if we multiply this value by 100 so that will be equal to 99.74 percent now in getting this value you know if we're asked to check if that is equal to 0.9974 if this is your normal curve so you need to locate your values. If this is positive 3, then if this is your negative 3, then what will be the area in between your negative 3 and positive 3? So that will be, is it equal to 0.9974 or 99.74%? So you need to check that using your seat table. And you need to explain why we come up with the idea that 0.9974 is the area in between your C is equal to negative 3 and C is equal to positive 3. So again, your task is to explain why we come up or we came up with that value. Using the C table in determining areas under the normal curve, you know, when your C is given as part of the summary, we need to follow your step number one, step number two, and step number three, plus your step number four. So we're just simply converting your C, uh, C scores, given C values or your C score, into a three-digit form, if that is a two-digit form. Then step number two, we need to uh, look for the first two-digit in a row. Then step number th uh, three is the third digit in column. Then take the area value at the intersection of row and column. So whatever the value between these two, row and column, then that will be the value that we can map to each value of your C score. Again, so there are scenarios or situations that we need to compute for the values of your C. So not all the time your C scores are given. But there are times that we need to compute for the value of your C. It depends if there are given value of your population mean, your sample mean, your population standard division, your sample standard division. Then we can move forward in using your two formulas. It depends or it depends on the given value if that is from population or from your sample. So for this summary, you need to look for or you need to follow for these four steps in finding the area that we can map to each value of your C-score under your probability distribution. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.